Hey guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. So on today's episode, we're gonna be talking about your net worth and your self-worth because there is a difference and sometimes people get them mixed up. And what ends up happening is that your net worth becomes your self-worth. We live in a culture that is so obsessed about what we have, what we look like, how much money we make, how much money we have, and it ends up being part of how we define ourselves. And that can be very dangerous. So let me say it again. Your net worth is not your self-worth. But sadly, our net worth, it is a number that we have in front of us, right? Our money has numbers to it. That your debt, your income, like there are numbers attached to your money. Where other parts of your life, that's not the case, right? Like I could say, I'm an awesome wife. Marriage is so great right now. There's not a number to that. I can't be like, I'm like at a 95 or something. No. Or I could tell you, I uh, screamed at my kids again this morning to get ready for school and I'm running around all stressed out. And so I was not a good mom this morning. 32, like, I, like there's not a number for that, right? But your money, there is a number. And that's what ends up defining us because it is a number right in your face. And that number can carry a lot of emotion for people. It can, on one side, carry a lot of embarrassment, a lot of shame, a lot of regrets, a lot of exhaustion, a lot of hopelessness. And then for some people on the other side, that number carries a lot of pride, a lot of keep trying to keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going this unhealthy drive just to get more and more and more because you find your, your value in that. So either way, I just wanna nix it. Again, your net worth is not your self-worth. Okay, I love Christmas shopping, but it can get so expensive. That's why I wanna tell you about our sponsor, Slick Deals. Slick Deals is your secret weapon for stretching your shopping budget. They've got a browser extension that helps you get the best deals and verified coupons on all the gifts on your list. So check it out at slickdeals.net slash Rachel. So what is your net worth? Let's talk about that. Your net worth is what you own minus what you owe. So it's the total value of your assets. So if you have a house, car, investments, cash, any of that, what you own minus what you owe, all of your liabilities. So mostly debt, credit card debt, student loans, your mortgage. And so you calculate that number and that number, what you own minus what you owe, is your net worth. So let's just do a little example here of my made up friend, Sam. So we'll look at Sam's assets. So she owns a home valued at $210,000. She has a 401k with $60,000 in it. Her car is worth 15,000. She has $7,000 in savings. She has $2,000 in her checking account. All of that added up, Sam has $294,000 of total assets. Now, what does she owe? She has credit card debt up to $12,000. She has student loan debt of $35,000. She has a mortgage of $175,000. She has a car loan with $10,000. She has medical bills that equal $1,000. So all of her debt or her liabilities added up to $233,000. So when you look at what she owns, again, her assets of $294,000, thousand dollars minus what she owes two hundred and thirty three thousand dollars that means her net worth is sixty one thousand dollars so again i tell you that number because i think it's very important for you to know that not to identify who you are but for you to know where you're at financially again knowing your assets like how much is in your investments how much is your car worth how much is your house worth like knowing that information is good and then also I want you to know what you owe if you owe anything, because it's gonna be part of getting out of debt. You have to know that number and say, okay, here are my liabilities, here are all my debt, and actually face it. So some people don't even wanna know their net worth because it's gonna stress them out. But knowing it actually gives you power to start making changes in your money habits. So again, with this though, this concept, it's a great motivator just to know what it is for the knowledge aspect. But what ends up happening is we become obsessed with that number and that number starts to determine who we are and that's where it gets really, really unhealthy. So for Sam, my imaginary friend, that number sure can affect her options in life, right? If she has payments every month, all of that, but it has zero power to add or to take away from who she is. And your self-worth has to be rooted 
and things that you believe in, things that you value. And this is really important. And I would recommend you guys to, to really think about this, to know where am I valued? And I would also challenge you not to put your value in something that can be taken away. If your value is in a job that you have and it's gone tomorrow, who are you? If it's in a role that you have in life and that is taken away, then who are you? If it's in what kind of car you drive and it's taken away, who are you? So when you eliminate all of that, to put your value of who you are into things that cannot be taken away gives you power to yourself to have a level of peace and to have a level of contentment. And so like for me as a Christian, I'm like, my value is that I'm God's. Like I, I am a child of God. Everything else can be taken away, but that is the truth of where I rest. Not saying that that would be really hard if everything was taken away. And I'm like, oh no, I went sent my kids, no. Uh, but if that all happened, right? Like where does my value rest? And so I would really, really challenge you guys, think about that. And again, the, the problem, the conflict comes in is that we live in a culture where our value now is put into so many other things. It's put into cars and vacations and houses and jobs and salaries and your net worth. So uh, it, it's a really good thing just to examine you guys, to really, really examine and to say, okay, I'm not gonna put who I am by this number that's in my checking account or this number of debt that I owe because it's not who you are. And when you start to believe that, then that really does, it, it disintegrates your heart and your soul and who you are. And so you just wanna be careful, again, that if you've made big mistakes with money in the past, that this feeling of that, you're worthless or regret, all of that, you have to leave that aside because your past mistakes are not who you are in the future. And on the flip side, if you've won with money and you've done awesome, if that becomes your only goal in life, then that starts to build up pride and a level of security that's really dangerous that you have to be aware of as well. So again, this money idea is, is really important. Money is a tool to be used. I don't want it to take over your life but we also wanna make sure that it does not define who you are. So some of the steps that you know I kind of walk through in my own life with this is truly finding that contentment piece. Like contentment is huge. It is su has such great gain in your life when you are content. And I think it starts with gratitude, being thankful for where you are and what you have. It's also having a level of humility. And I love C.S. Lewis says that humility is not thinking less of yourself, but it's thinking of yourself less when you actually can look up and the world is not centered around you and you actually see people around you and your time and your relationships and your money and there's a level of generosity there. That to me breeds contentment. And I talk about all of that in the contentment journal where we spend 30 days in gratitude, 30 days in humility and 30 days in contentment because I think this is such, such important work, such important topic. So if you wanna check out the contentment journal, I will leave a note, a link in the description. So make sure to check it out. I am, I'm really passionate about this because I think it's really, really important. It's building a solid financial foundation that we talk about a lot on this show from the numbers of the emergency fund and getting yourself out of debt, like all of that, investing 15% of your income, like all of that is such an important financial foundation, but there's also a soul foundation that you wanna be working on as well, and that's who you are. So hopefully this video is a reminder for you, and I would encourage you to share this with a friend who needs this reminder as well. So remember you guys, it's all about taking control of your money and creating a life you love. 